All right, guys, we're at the Westerville Community uh, United Church of Christ, and we're gonna be going in there. We're gonna hopefully talk to the pastor here because there's a couple people here, but we're gonna go rebuke this church because they support a little, a little bit of pride. And First Timothy chapter four tells us how people are gonna follow doctrines of devils during the last times, and we need to go to this church and we need to call them out for their false teachings of the word of God. And the woman's even a pastor, and it tells us in Timothy that a woman shall not be speaking in a church and she shall stay silent. Hey, nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Garrett. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Bella. Bella, come on in. Have a seat. I guess I saw it come up on your website a little bit. Okay. Um, so like what do you like what are your beliefs in um in God? Like do you believe like he's holy? Oh, of course I I'm a clergy person. Of course I believe like, God all, is like, holy. All holy, like all holy, yes. So do you believe like uh like everything in the Bible is like true? I do believe everything in the Bible is true. I would not I'm not a Bible literalist. I take the Bible very seriously, but not literally. I've based my whole life on it. So like <clears throat> on the website, I guess, I kind of have like some questions. So it does say that you guys support like pride, right? Absolutely. Like, do you know like the Bible kind of goes against that? Like contradicts it a little bit? Like, yeah, like first fact, Corinthians six, nine. Yeah, I have spent my life studying scripture and there is a really good book. I have, I loaned it out to someone. So I suspect that you are here to talk to me about the LGBTQ community and how yeah. you are not affirming. So let me cut this conversation uh, short. Um, we can sit here and argue about the Bible all day long and what it has to say. Oh, yeah. And um, if you all choose to believe the Bible in its literal version, I will not argue that. That is your choice. Um, I have a lot of conversations with folks who feel differently than I do, and we typically get caught in what I call proof texting. There is no evidence to suggest that Paul, for example, when he said women should be quiet in church, knew that he was writing to a group of people who would be reading his letters thousands of years later. Everything was written with a particular context and group of people in mind. So I take that into account. I've spent years, years unpacking what it all means trying to understand their audience, their influences, what was happening in the context um, for the people they were writing to. So with that in mind, like, I understand the overarching theme of the Bible <laughs> is to love. I love you. I love you too, my friend. And that's why friend. I came here today to just talk to you about it. Yeah. Because, I mean, it does tell us in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, it says, a man shall not lie up a man. Mm -hmm. That's an abomination to God. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're like, ideology is around it, but it does specifically tell us in the Bible that a man should not lie with a man. Yeah, it does. Because it's a sin. It does. It also says that a woman should be quiet in church. It does, yeah, look it does what say I, that as too. Look what I do every Sunday. I know, it does say that as well. So I'm how do you see. feel about me being a pastor? I still believe that women shouldn't be speaking okay. in churches. I believe men should be the ones taking the roles. How do you feel about that? You haven't said a word. Um, I agree with, I mean, just what the word says. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like a male should take the role of a pastor. I know it does tell us too in First Timothy chapter 4, it says people will abandon the faith during the later mm -hmm. times and follow doctrines of devils and follow mm -hmm. deceiving spirits. And I'm not trying to come at you in a hard way, but I don't think this is a church. I think this is something that's not like really a church because you're going against God's words solely. Okay. And like, I love you and that's why I'm coming here. And that's what Paul did. I mean, that's what Paul said about women not being able to speak. And then John, in the book of Revelation, how I went to the churches. What's your end game? My end game? What are you hoping to do today? Is to come here to tell you that I love you and that... And to accomplish what? And to accomplish, to tell you to turn away and to repent. Like, okay. like John did in the book of Revelation when he went to the church, the lukewarm church. So you've just sat in my office in the church where I have been called by God and by the people here to serve as a pastor to tell me that number one, you don't respect me as a pastor. You oh, don't I never believe, said I don't respect you. You don't believe that I am called to serve this church as a pastor because the word tells you otherwise. It's so why would God. I continue you, to you engage can't in change the word of God. It's the word of God. If you're going against the word of God, but I think that this is where your own desires. I think that this is where we have a have a conflict where we're probably not gonna come to agreement. Because what you see as the word of God, I see as the word inspired by God through humans, written for particular people and places for their context. So do you believe that you have to be a good person to get in heaven? Or do you believe that you have to obey God's laws? Because it does say in John 14, 15, if you love God, you'll keep his commandments. 
And if you're going against God's word and you're saying that it's okay for a homosexual to be married to a homosexual, that is a sin and it's an abomination in God's eyes. Mm. And I love you and I'm coming here to tell you the truth of what the gospel truly tells us. That's your truth. That's and not the, it's the truth word of God. as I see it's, it. it's what God says. Yeah. That's not my word, that's God's word. That's God your understanding of God's word. There are multiple it's, it's, creation it's in stories in the Bible. So you're saying the Bible is without conflict. The Bible was written from the apostles that walked with Jesus. Okay. They walked with Jesus. This, to me, does not feel like an open dialogue. I'm going to ask you to leave now. No, I'm going to tell okay. you I appreciate what you are doing, and I appreciate that you're taking the time to do this. It's because I care I would, about people, and I love them. Because yes. if, if I didn't come here, I, I care about people okay. so much, I will never ask them to change. I would stand in a bus, in front of a bus, for any member of our congregation, gay, straight, transgender, bisexual. They are every single one made in God's image. And I love, and I love every single gay, bisexual, I will bisexual, not ask them to change. Person. My theology will not change because of this conversation today. And that's okay because it does tell us that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is, is King of Kings. Okay. Thank you for stopping by. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, as you can see there, we just went into the church. And th these are what progressive churches will happen. She's suiting her own desires. She's trying to say scripture and say, oh, this is what I like. You know, maybe it doesn't apply to what it is now. Yes, it does. The word of God stays the same today and stays the same as it was forever. Don't call that a church because that is not a church. And if you see any of those churches, we need to stand up as Christians. And we need to go in there and rebuke these churches just like John did in the book of Revelation.